Hello ladies and gentlemen, hello aviators, aviation lovers and simulation enthusiasts. This is your captain speaking and welcome to this Pilot Dreams channel flight. Today we're gonna learn how to perform a takeoff in a 737. We're gonna review the process from lining up all the way to 10,000 feet. We might pause a few times in the middle because the process is very quick and we want to emphasize a few points along the way. So without further ado, the weather is nice, we're at uh, Amsterdam Schiphol on the ground. Just uh, before runway 18 left, the departure for today is gonna be Arnhem 3 Echo. We finished all the processes required until the lineup uh, position. You can find links in the description below for the before uh, taxi, start procedure, preliminary pre flight, and pre flight. And we're all ready and set to go. So, upon arriving to the lineup position, we should set uh, the weather radar for the pilot flying. So, we can see the screen over here. We press the weather button, and we can see that the weather radar is on. Usually we use a tilt of uh, 5 degrees just before takeoff, so we can change it over here in the radar display. In a simulator it's automatic. Pilot monitoring, which will be the first officer to for today, should set his radar for terrain. We can see terrain displays on. The way to do it is pressing terrain over here. We should also verify with the, the cabin crew that the cabin is secure. So usually what we'll do is uh, press the 10 button over here create contact with us in the interphone and ask what we want and we will verify that the cabin is ready so let's assume they told us uh, yes captain the cabin is ready and once everything ready the pilot flying is calling for the before takeoff checklist it's found over here in, on the yacht but uh, it's a very long list over here in the simulator from my company it's a very simple one so the pilot monitoring says flaps and the pilot flying should verify over here that we have the flap setting that we want so today it's going to be five green lights to make sure the leading edge uh, flaps are extended also make sure your flap handle is in the right position and the next item is going to be stabilizer trim and the answer should be 5.75 units and the pilot monitoring declares before takeoff checklist is completed so the next item is not part of a procedure or a checklist and was supposed to be ready prior to that but i like to check it before lining up so i'm taking a look at my pfd and make sure that i have the auto throttles in arm lnav or heading select or other lateral mode ready and armed and also a vertical mode ready and armed and v speeds that are entered correctly with flight director on now we are ready to line up and we're waiting for our turn Usually the tower will uh, contact us and say something like Pilot Dreams Channel Fight, you are clear to line up and wait runway 18 left and the pilot monitoring should say clear to line up and wait 18 left Pilot Dream Channel Flight. The next thing we're gonna do is the pilot flying is gonna start taxiing. So let's release the parking brakes. Advance the throttles to no more than 40% and start rolling. What pilot, the pilot monitoring will do at this time, and let's pause for a second. So the pilot monitoring will uh, inform the cabin crew that we're lining up. The way to do it is using the chime. So we inform the cabin crew that we're lining up. And the pilot monitoring should also set the lights. So we have taxi already on. We don't need the retractable lights for today. The fix are going to be switched on only once getting a clearance for takeoff. So the only light we have to change is switching the position lights from steady to a strobe and steady. This will indicate that we're entering the runway. And the last thing we need to do is the pilot monitoring should set the transponder or TA and RA, so we'll get warnings for incoming traffic. And now we should align the aircraft with the runway, hopefully I will get it right and make sure the heading is correct. A bit of an overturn, sorry my bad. And let's break. Since we don't have a takeoff clearance yet, we can set the parking brake. And now when we're lined up, we have to make sure our heading matches the runway heading. 
so we can see heading of 1A2 this is because I'm a little bit off you can check it also here actually it's 181 let's get the screens ready for takeoff okay so we enlarge the PFD and the ND in the navigation display because we're going to use them during takeoff and uh, once the takeoff clearance is received we're going to advance the throttles to 40% and press toga once the RPM is stabilized at 40% you can see the toga button over here I got it configured in my uh, yoke so you advance the throttles to 40 and press toga and then the auto throttles will open the throttles to the takeoff thrust that is required so the next phase will be the tower contacting us and giving us a takeoff permissions it will go something like pilot wind channel fight you are clear to take off 18 left and the readback should be Clear for departure, 18 left, pilot dream channels flight. Once the clearance is received, pilot monitoring should turn on the fixed lights. Both pilots should uh, start the elapsed time in their uh, watch. So let's start it here for the pilot flying, which is the captain. And also start it for the pilot monitoring, which is the first officer today. Release the parking brakes. Advance the throttles to 40%. You can see it over here. Wait for it to stabilize. And once it stabilizes, we press toga. And you can see the auto throttles are advancing the throttles. Forward light pressure on the stick to make sure the nose wheel uh, steering works good. Let's pause for a second. And after we press toga, we can see over here. N1, this is the mode for the auto throttle. Heading select is now active with LNAV arm for after takeoff. And for the vertical mode, TOGA is the mode selected with VNAV arm for after takeoff. And we can see the red green starting to rise. This is the velocity vector. And we will keep a little bit of forward light pressure on the yoke until 80 knots and maintain the runway heading. Thrust set. This is declared by the pilot monitoring. Once it is declared, if the first officer is the pilot flying, the first officer will take off his hand from the throttles and the captain will put his hand on the throttles until V1. This is because if a rejected takeoff might take place, the pilot flying should be the captain. In case the captain is the pilot flying like today, so we're just declaring thrust set and this is it. 80 knots. Checked. Pilot monitoring should declare 80 knots, pilot flying should confirm and both pilots are actually verifying that their speed indicators are working and agreeing. Now you can see the throttle mode change to throttle hold. That means the auto throttle uh, servo is disconnected and the throttles are just maintaining their previous position. Of course we can change them now manually in case we need the extra power or in case of emergency or something like that but usually there's no reason to change that. Just keep the runway heading. V1 should be an auto call and rotate should be a pilot monitoring call. Rotate. How do we rotate? So please pay attention. We should raise the nose to a pitch of 15 degrees. Okay, it's over here. The rate in which we're going to do it is between 2 to 3 degrees per second. It's a slow rate, it's not a fast rate. If you pull too hard, you might hit the tail and get a tail strike. So, the rhythm you're going to do it is 2 to 3 degrees per second, all the way until 50 degrees. So let's release the pause and do it. Just start a light backward pressure. All the way to 15 degrees. Okay, you can see that after we are airborne, Elnav is engaged. And we're going to continue flying and follow the flight director. The way to do it is to follow the magenta markings with the aircraft position indicators patented in uh, black. Now with the positive rate of flying, pilot monitoring declares positive rate and the pilot flying should say gear up. And the gears are being raised. 
Now, upon passing 400 uh, feet, we can engage the autopilot, and we also see that uh, the vertical mode changed to VIN of speed. Today, we're going to engage the autopilot because we want our attention free in order to keep track of the phases of the departure and make sure we cover everything. When engaging the autopilot, you must make sure there is no pressure on the stick and on the pedals. If there is a pressure on the sticks or on the pedals, the autopilots might not engage. So the way to do it is just press command over here command express and you can see the command mode over here always verify that the pilot that the autopilot is engaged you can see auto throttles change to arm we're starting a left turn it's always a good practice to follow your turn together with the heading selector in case ATC will give you a heading instructions so we're turning the heading over there let's increase a little bit the map display range and now the command mode for the auto throttle is N1, which means it will keep the required N1 for climb. When we we'll hit 3000, we will have to change pressures for uh, local pressure to standard pressure. We can do it a few feet, 300 feet before, so let's change the pressure to standard pressure. And we're doing today nose abatement procedure number 2, so in 3000 the aircraft will start accelerating. And we will start reduction of the flap configuration. Here it is, speed going up to 230 knots. Let's pause for a second. Now the important thing to understand regarding the flaps retraction procedure is that you can raise the flaps even below the speed for the current flap indication. What do I mean? At the moment we have a green arrow going up and we are below the flaps 1 velocity. We can call for flaps 1 prior to reaching uh, flaps 1 position because speed is up going and then we can call for flaps up prior to reaching the flaps up speed we don't have to wait this is the most efficient way to retract your flaps so we're going to start this procedure the pilot flying calls for the flap retractions so it will call something like flaps one and the pilot monitor should answer flaps one set after he moves the flaps handle so let's do it captain calls flaps one first officer will change the flaps flaps one and both pilots should review the process. Once we cross the uh, one position, one speed, sorry, we can call for flaps up. So again, pilot flying calls for flaps up. Pilot monitoring says flaps up, removes the handle. Both pilots are going to review that the flaps are up. Okay, 1000 before uh, the altitude or the level set here in the MCP, we're gonna get a uh, ring annunciator telling us we're uh, 1000 to level off. Actually, it happens uh, around 900 before the altitude. So you can check it in a second over here, it's going to hear a chime. Bang. Okay, and the altitude is uh, surrounded by a rectangle over here. Now we're at 250 minutes, all drag is reduced because we're catching the altitude. The mode changes to FMC speed and to VNAV path. Let's pause for a second. Now it's the time to uh, finish all the leftovers from the takeoff procedure. The pilot monitoring can uh, do his actions without requirement from the pilot flying. And uh, the only requirement for the pilot flying should be for after takeoff checklist. Of course, if the pilot monitoring haven't done the required procedure yet, so the pilot flying can call for uh, after takeoff procedure. The things he needs to do is put the landing gear in the off position. And it would be a good practice, of course, to verify there are no landing gear lights over here and that the flaps are all up with light extinguished. Second thing he has to do is move this auto brake switch to off. He can also reduce some of the lights, so we need the anti collision. We need to fix until uh, level 100, uh, so just close the taxi. We also need to make sure the packs are on auto, the bleeds are on on and it will be a good practice in this phase to make sure that the uh, cabin pressure is starting to build and we don't have a pressurization malfunction. After all the actions are completed, the pilot flying to date is the captain call for the after takeoff checklist. Again, like every checklist, the pilot monitoring reads the item, the pilot flying answers with the action or the switch position required and both crew members verifying that this is the correct position. So, captain calling for after takeoff checklist please and the first officer starting engine bleeds 
and both crew members should verify the engine bleeds are on. Packs, both crew members should verify the packs are on auto. Landing gear, up and off should be verified by both crew members. Make sure no lights are over here. The handle is in the middle positions and the flaps up with no lights. Verify the handle. Verify also the indicator over here is at zero and with no lights. And after that, we declare after takeoff checklist completed. Usually around, around this page, we will get further flight instruction. We can see today we are flying to Evlut. The required altitude at Evlut is uh, flight level 60, so we can climb further at the moment. So we just have to wait uh, for further instruction by. So we just have to wait for further instruction by uh, departure. And usually, what departure will tell us is uh, pilot ring channel departure. After Evlut, you are clear to continue climbing to level 180. And the answer by the pilot monitoring should be a readback. Clear to climb to level 180 after Evlut, pilot dream channel flight. So we can see we're about to cross Evlut at a second. And once we cross Evlut, the color over here changes to magenta and we can raise the altitude to level, sorry. And we can raise the altitude to level 180. And the pilot uh, flying should uh, announce 180, verified over here, and the pilot monitoring should confirm 180. Okay, see for some reason we're not continuing the climb, so let's change for a second for level change. This will give us a direct climb to the required altitude. Level change, and we can see the modes changing to N1. This will be a full climb power. NMCP speed, we're climbing 250 knots because we're below level uh, 100 and we're, uh, we're restricted to 250 knots and below below and we're restricted to one, 250 knots and below below level 110 let's try arming vinov again okay and we're vinov speed and we're climbing to level 180 uh, the next phase will be crossing uh, level 100 once crossing level 100, we are cleared from the 250 knots limitation, so we can accelerate. Uh, the computer too will do it automatically. Let's pause for a second. If we want to know what will be the speed that will uh, climb after 250, we can see the FMC switched automatically to the Econ climb, and you can see our speed above level 100 is going to be 295 knots or 0.48 Mach. So this will be the speed that the aircraft will accelerate in uh, level 100. The other things that is going to happen in level 100 is that we can close the fixed lights. And if the weather is okay, there's no turbulence, release the passengers and the cabin crew so they can walk around in the cabin. And in a second, we'll cross level 100. In the meantime, follow with the heading in case you get instructions from the ATC to maintain a heading. And once crossing level 100, we're starting to accelerate. Now it's the time to close the fixed lights and to release the crew and the passengers, the cabin crew and the passengers by switching the fastened seatbelts to auto. And this is it for today. Thank you very much for joining this uh, Pilot Dreams channel flight where we learn how to take off in a 737 all the way to level uh, 100. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. But do it gently. Don't press, don't smash and don't kill the button. Just press it gently. Consider subscribing and I'm looking forward to seeing you in our future flights and until next time, fly safely, goodbye.